Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're starting a new project over in Kent. It's a listed building that's having a full renovation. So we'll be installing five bathrooms, a full central heating, two oil boilers, and a complete plant room setup. So stay tuned, keep an eye out for each episode in this series, and you can follow us along the journey. Okay, so this is the plant room that we're gonna be installing all the components in. We're putting in a 300 litre unvented indirect hot water cylinder. That's gonna be pumped with a DAB SE tank, which is going in on the left. That hasn't arrived yet, but once it does, I'll go through with you a bit more detail on how that operates. On this half of the property, we're having one oil boiler. So this is a Navian system boiler. We're having a low loss header, two zones, upstairs and downstairs, and hot water zone, so three zones in total. So we're using a rapid rail wall raven system to mount all our pipe work on again. That worked really well last time. So we're gonna be using that again, the same one we used on the chapel video. So down here, we're gonna be having a low loss header, running the pipe work behind the DAB and the unbending cylinder. And then we're gonna be having our zone valves and risers all going up through here. And then up through that gap there, the first floor joists are actually all exposed upstairs. So Bailey's already started to get the rapid rail on the wall and we can start getting the hammer fixings in and getting some pipe work laid out. Right, this is a low loss header we're gonna be installing on this one. It's rated up to 40 kilowatts, so we've got a 36 kilowatt boiler, so it'll be absolutely fine. It comes pre-insulated. You can buy these from the plumber merchants, but they're a lot cheaper on eBay. It's exactly the same product. So you've got a drain off with a little magnet on the bottom, which will help collect sludge and debris. And then you've got an AAV on the top. So all the fittings we're gonna be using today and throughout this job are gonna be press fit. So we're gonna use press fit wherever possible because it's a listed building we don't want to risk um, getting the blow torches out. So I just bought these fittings, they're just inch to 28 mil, go straight in and we can press straight onto it. So nice, quick and easy. Okay, so we're just starting to chuck some pipe work on the wall now on these wall raven rapid rails. So this main flow and return here is coming from the boiler and on the side of these navians you have these cutout holes where the flow and return will come out. So from here, we're running along this rear wall, rear wall where the window is and then running behind the cylinder and the DAB tank. And then that's going straight into our low loss header there. So all our zone valves will be on the right hand side as you walk in the main door. Right, these are the um, press fit fittings we're gonna be using. I believe the brand is Pegasus. So they come in an individual bag, which I like, so you don't get any like debris on the rubber O-rings. They've also got these green wrappers, similar to like Gerberit, where you, um, once you press it, that peels off, so you know that it's all done. So it's a good indicator. Some of the other press fittings don't have that. The press guns that we use is the REMS 22 volts, and we use everything as m jaw obviously for the copper. So yeah, really good, reliable guns. We've got two of these, been using them for you know, five, six years now. So yeah, still going strong. Okay, we're starting to make good progress on this boiler room now and the DAB brake tank turned up a little while ago. So for those of you that don't know what this is, this is a stored body of water, um, cold water. So it's fed via the cold water main and inside this little hatch here is just like a standard ball valve. So this is our cold water main here. That feeds the ball valve and then what happens is that fills up this tank completely with water. It holds 480 litres and then sitting on this section here is like a cold water main boost pump. So it's incredibly powerful. I believe it can go up to 8 bar, do like 80 litres per minute. So the reason we're installing one of these is because we've only got a 20 mil incoming cold water main which is there 
and the flow rate is absolutely terrible. It's almost like 12 liters per minute. So with five bathrooms, that's never gonna work. So what this will do is it will balance our hot and cold water for us. So just to explain to you the way we've plumbed it in. So we've got the cold water main running up behind the brake tank. That feeds the ball valve here. And then what happens is it's gonna feed the kitchen sink over on the left. And then we put a lever valve here. So the reason we've got a lever valve here and also a lever valve on the pumped outlet is because if this pump was ever to fail, you need to make sure you've got a bypass so you can still have cold water. So the only thing that isn't gonna be um, pumped by this tank is the kitchen. So although this tank does hold potable water, I just wanna make sure that this is direct to the kitchen, which is through there. So that's what we've got installed in there. So yeah, we've made really good progress on this today. We've got our flow and returns in for the Navian boiler, which is here. That runs along here behind that brake tank. We've got the unvented cylinder in the correct position. And then the low loss header, which we were setting up earlier. Bailey's been working on this side. He's got that all in nice and neat here. So I forgot to buy some press fit tees, unfortunately. So what he's been doing is running the flow and returns up into the ceiling space and he's just bent them in and they're just ready to be teed into the flow here and a return here on the low loss header. So I just want to show you this bend he did here in one, which is pretty fantastic so it's just showing off now um, so tomorrow's job we need to um, basically convert that over get it to 22 mil and then start teeing all these pipes in and I'm gonna start running the pipe work well into the kitchen which I've drilled the holes through there and got them all sleeved so yeah happy with how today's gone and we'll be back tomorrow Okay, so it's day two now. We're back in the plant room and today's job for me is I need to start running the hot and hot return into the kitchen and Bailey's gonna start finishing off the manifold section for the zone valves. Okay, so I've got the laser set up now and I'm just gonna start getting these brackets level and in position. So the best way I find of doing it on this rapid route is to get your hammer fixings in loose first, set your laser up and then I could just guide them up and down and then obviously once the laser line is across the face of the thread, they're in position and I just follow that through with the rest of the brackets and then I'll get the rubber line clips screwed in. Okay, so I've now got the hot, hot return and cold running along above this DAB tank and then it's going through into the kitchen. So the wall on the kitchen is actually getting metalled off so um, we'll be able to just run it across the brickwork in there but we do that at another stage of the job. Uh, down here I've just connected up the DAB tank on the outlet so one thing I would say I don't particularly like about these tanks is the threads on them are plastic that you join onto, so you just got to be extra careful. So that's an inch outlet there. Obviously we just reduced it down to 22 mil. So yeah, that's all in and I'm just going to fit the filter. Okay, so I'm about to put the filter on and return back to the boiler. So it's really important you put a filter on any central heating system that you install. There is a small filter on the low loss header, but it's nowhere near as powerful or as um, capable as this here. So the reason I like these Grant Mag ones is because they come in 28 mil. There's not much options with 28 mil filters. I think you've got the Magna Clean, which is a lot more expensive than this. But also this is good because you've got the um, reducers if you want to chuck it in 22 mil, you can. Metal isolation valves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tee this in here or chop this in here on the return and then that'll be done. Okay, so I've just pulled out the DAV SE tank and this is the overflow pipe. So you've got a big ton dish here. Um, this here is supposed to be inch and a half or 44 mil, but the fittings are slightly off, but I'm reducing it down to 32 mil. And I'm gonna run a waste pipe straight to outside for the overflow. So I've just caught this hole here, which is a complete bastard. Um, and then I'm gonna go outside and put one of those um, 
flu snug adapters on just to get it all airtight and looking nice outside. Poke a bit of 32 mil in and then get this plums in and that'll be the last plumbing connection on this DAB tank and we can get it in situ. Okay, so this is what the pipe snug looks like externally. Makes it nice and neat whenever you're terminating pipes through a wall. It's airtight as well, so you haven't got to worry about putting any sand and cement or anything on it. There's a little rubber in here on the inside as well as the outside. It just allows you also to slide your pipes in and out and making the installation way simpler. So all I'm going to do, this is an overflow pipe, so I'm just going to leave it dropping like that and then I can go inside and get it plumbed in. Okay, so that's the 32mm waste pipe in for the DAB SE tank and while I was there I've just called through and also put the PRV, uh, the D2 discharge pipe um, in as well. So those bricks were an absolute nightmare, just kept breaking every sort of 10, 20 mil. Three courses, no cavity, nightmare. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the day now and I'll just give you an update as to where we're at. So the DAB SE tank is all plumbed in now. The feeds are in for the kitchen. Lever valves there all in line so we all can be isolated. So we've got the overflow in on the back. That's that black waste pipe down there. And also the pressure relief valve for the cylinders. The only thing I've got left to do on this is I just need to drop the pump down onto this housing here, which I will show you tomorrow. And then over on this side, Bailey's doing a really good job of getting all this manifold completed. So check out this fancy bend here that he's done all the way up to the hot return pump. So on the left here, we've got the bronze um, hot return pump. And then every zone is going to have its own individual pump on this one, just because it's a slightly larger property. I just want to make sure everything is balanced correctly. So yeah, we're doing all right on day two. So tomorrow, I'm hoping that the plinth will turn up for the boiler so I can get the boiler um, all piped up and flew in. Bailey's just got a few um, remaining sections to do on this. And then we'll be pretty much done other than the oil line, which we have got a problem with. So um, we'll look at that tomorrow. Okay, so it's day three now, and unfortunately I've arrived a bit late today because I had a problem with the van on the way home. I had to go and pick up a rental this morning, which was just great. So what I'm gonna get on with now is I need to call the hole for the boiler. The plimps turned up so I can raise it up, and I need to get the flue into location. Bailey's just finishing off the manifold section, so all the kids are turned up for that now. And then hopefully we'll be close to done other than the oil line. Okay, so I've just got the top off the Navion boiler now, and if any of you want to find out more information about these boilers, I've got a video previous to this, which goes through a bit more in depth of how to install one. So this is a 36 kilowatt system boiler, built in pump, which is gonna to pump to the low loss header. On the external version, you can't go straight out through the top, only on the internal version you can. You can go out through the sides though. What I've done is I've just punched out this hole in the back because we're just terminating um, horizontally straight to outside. And what I need to do is just get the plinth on the bottom of the boiler, measure the height and the distance that I want it and get this hole drilled. Right, so the core hole's all drilled, flues in. And for some reason they gave me an extra short horizontal flue with a terminal on. I guess because it's an external version, normally the flue would literally just terminate outside. Um, but I'm fitting it inside because on these external versions you get a lot more insulation. I just prefer the green colour, it's better protected. So I just need to swap that out. But it's in the right location now, which means I can pipe it all up. So on the side panel here, you've got your flow and return connections. And then with the installation kit you get with the boiler, you get these shark bite elbows, which sit on there and then straight onto some lever valves. And then I can run the flow and return through these pipes here and connect on. And then once we've done that, I've just got to get a floor standing expansion vessel, which I'm hoping to drop somewhere here. Um, while I'm doing that, Bailey is beginning to mount the pump onto the SE tank. So we were looking for ages for instructions for this when it came, I couldn't find them anywhere and I was uh, having a bit of a whinge, but they were actually underneath the green housing section of this. So now that we've found the instructions, we're making good progress. Bailey's just setting it up and then hopefully we can start filling all this up today. Thank you. 
Okay, so I've got the pipe working now for the boiler. So you can actually run it through in 28 mil, but I've just bent it through in 22. So reducing it from there to there is not really gonna make too much of a difference. Um, if you was gonna fit this boiler externally, there would be rubber grommets going on here, but I'm not gonna bother putting on them. I'd rather just get it done in one bend rather than having an elbow inside the boiler. So these are the lever valves you get with it. Um, just two lever valves like shark bite style fittings. They go straight onto those elbows. And then, yeah, so what I've done, um, just before the filter, I've just added the floor stand and expansion vessel. So I've kept it fairly tight over to the right of the boiler because this panel here is for the condense. So what we'll do is we need to work in there and then bring out a condense pipe out of this little slot here and then straight outside. So um, I've also added this plimp to the bottom of the boiler, which raises it up. So the floor level in here is actually lower than the ground level outside. So I need to get as much height as I can on the condense to get that to work. Um, it's currently all being filled up. Bailey's just filling it up now. The DAB tank is on and the pump is housed. So that was fairly straightforward once we actually read the instructions. So um, yeah, it worked out okay. Bailey's done a masterful job over here with the rest of the pipe work. He's just filling it up now. You don't have to hide, mate. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's um, pretty much all finished. Um, we just got to tidy it up. Um, get it lagged, make sure we've got no leaks, and then it's all ready for the electrician to um, come and wire it all in. Three, two, one. Okay, so it's day four now, and we've just put all the insulation on the pipework. I won't bore you too much with that, but what we did use was the rubber flex stuff from Williams. So what we've got to do next is the oil line. Okay, so this is outside now where the oil line used to be. So at the moment, we're unsure of how we're gonna get the oil line here from the tank, because it's kind of been removed. There is a duct there, but it's not really suitable because we can't feed the rigid pipe through it. So what we've done is we've just got it kind of set up, ready to go. So we've got our filter, isolation, valve fire valve we've used the old hole where the feed for the oil line was for the old boiler for the fire valve file and then on these navians you've got to have a tiger loop or it's highly recommended so i've moved over quite far to the right so i just want to keep it away from the flu although i probably will be adding a plume kit at some point so that's all good to go so yeah we're pretty much done on this job now all we are waiting for is the oil line to be connected and the electrician to wire everything in so next week we can jump on the first fixed pipe work on the first floor.